what's good what's good everybody welcome back to the broken traditions podcast this is episode 10 um before i get into everything man i want to say what up to everybody also i want to apologize for um the episode coming out late so last week i had to go to new york my son finally made the move to new york and he saw his career in new york so we had to load up a chrysler pacifica head up to new york drive up 85 for like 15 hours got to new york and also it was my mom's birthday so we celebrated her birthday we took some nice pictures you know what i'm saying had some nice pictures and had a great time went out to eat good spending time with the family flew back on sunday got a little bit of rest went to work monday then after that monday was my bonus daughter's birthday so we had to go out to eat for her birthday on monday so now i'm a little bit behind but i'm still going to create an episode so i want to apologize to the members of the youtube channel usually the episode comes out early for you guys unfortunately and it happened this week so i got to make it up to you guys somehow some way so i'll figure something out on the back end to make it up to the members but today man we having a great important conversation and i have a great guest coming on we have that girl casey from philly does she claim philly or does she claim Haiti, or do you claim New York? What do you, what do you claim? Do you claim Brooklyn? Do you claim just? <laughs> I claim I claim Philly. I I wouldn't claim Haiti because I'm American, you know. Okay. So I'm somewhere in America, right? But yeah. I, I do claim Philly, even though Philly's being burned alive. But I definitely claim. I still claim. <laughs> Same thing with Atlanta. Atlanta's being burnt alive too. Be, to be Crazy, honest. Crazy man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's sad, man. Things yeah. have good history and all. And, they're just tearing yeah. it up. But yeah, what's up? What's up? You had a busy much, weekend. You, yes, very busy weekend. Like, ooh, that drive was crazy. And he don't have his license, so he just sat there and handed me <laughs> snacks and <laughs> handed me waters. You know what I'm saying? And played music and playing drill music while we driving up wherever he wanted to play on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that drill music is annoying, man, because they got some tough beats on that drill music. And I'll be like, yeah. You should not listen to this. I'm like, the beat is tough, though. Like, I don't know. It's like <laughs> an internal battle, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, what's up? Man, 15 hours. When you said you drove to New York, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's about a couple hours. I forgot. You all the way down there. Yeah, I'm in Atlanta hours. City. Yeah, I mean, I drive to Atlantic City all the time from New York when <laughs> I was living in New York. That was nothing. I could right, drive to right. Atlantic City gamble and drive back home the same day. Right, but, right. right. <laughs> nah, driving from... Mm-mm. That's a whole day. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was, but it, I'm, yeah, glad, it was a lot. I'm glad you're back home safe. And, uh, you know, shout out to your son and, you know, praise God. Yeah. And hope yeah. for nothing but the best for him. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. But um, I wanted to have you come on to have this conversation about the Oscars and the new Everybody's on Uproar because Angela Bassett didn't win uh, the best, yeah. what was it, the best lead or no, the best supporting actress for her role supporting in actress. Black Panther 2 as uh, T'Challa's mom and I don't know I don't know if you've seen the movie or not her role wasn't that great her accent wasn't on point you know saying she got killed she wasn't even in that alone you know what I mean it wasn't it wasn't nothing to write home about she wasn't in there that long the way how everybody acted no she wasn't in there she wasn't in there for the full movie she got killed (laughs) you know what I would have thought she was in the movie mistaken too I think this might be the first time a Marvel movie got a nominated for like Academy Award. Nah, so the year that um, you know, post twenty twenty, why am I saying post twenty twenty? Nah, it, that wasn't post twenty twenty. It was before twenty twenty. I think. I think, because Wakanda did get awards. Um, it did get awards, but for like costume design and something else, like okay, so it fine, was right. like the original, like um, Wakanda was okay. Uh, why am I calling it Black Panther? I keep calling it Wakanda, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it did get awards because I remember because I remember the men, the costume designer, when she won her award, she was completely ungrateful. So I mm. know that they got awards before, but that was I think that was the first year a Marvel movie was. Um, was like nominated for an oscar that year and i noticed what they were doing with the oscars that year but yeah mm-hmm. yeah but i didn't know she wasn't in that movie that long i didn't see the movie which is crazy because back in the day i would have saw it already but yeah, yeah. I'm, and if, I'm not gonna go down a wormhole but the funny part about it when it was um <laughs> on streaming it came out the first day of black history month 
<laughs> yeah, that's, oh, yeah, of course. You gotta have the, you know, the Black History movies. You know, yeah. see yourself for Black History. Now you Angela Bassett with a bad African accent. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> That accent is terrible in these movies. You're right. You're right. Like, yeah, it was a bad accent. But yeah, you know, it's a bad accent. Like, it, it, she she's passionate in her acting, but the accent was bad. Yeah, she's a, she's a great actress. You know, what I'm saying yeah. to say the least. But um, right. I'm kind of glad this happened, and I hope I know people ain't gonna see it the way I'm seeing it, and I'm not even sure you gonna see it the way I see it. But I'm glad that this happened because. It's time for black people to stop um, hanging their hopes up on white validation. And it's like, all right, you can have somebody be great and it don't have to be validated by the eyes of white people. We don't have to keep seeking validation from white people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like we was talking about on the live stream when I had you on earlier, how it's only 22 black actors and actresses that won Academy Awards for their solo art. Back from mm-hmm. 1939 till 2021 with Will Smith, so it, uh, it's just been happening recently. It's nothing, you know, saying like it's it's something that's not happened as often. But we we spoke about off air about how they had the Oscars so white, and that was a thing that had to be fought for, and black people had to fight for inclusion in the Oscars, basically like these black actors. And when Oscars so white happened because of um the concussion with Will Smith and how Will Smith wasn't nominated for this role. Another actor with a bad act, um, bad accent during the time he oh, played concussion. Really? Yeah. He had a bad <laughs> accent in there too. So he uh, wasn't nominated and he felt the kind of way that him and his wife had a campaign. Then fast forward when he is nominated again, the Oscars was so white had this new campaign where they allowed you know, like black directors and black people behind the scenes and cameramen to do the Oscars. And what does Will Smith do during those Oscars? He smacks yeah. Chris Rock. So it's like, <laughs> Yo, you gave us that one okay. chance. Right. We finally got a foot in the door and you smacked this dude. At the Oscars. Like, you see why we don't let Trump call it? <laughs> it ain't never happened before. The Asians think they ain't doing it, right? The Indians, nope, they, they ain't doing they that. So <laughs> all that happened. And now, Fast forward, I think they like, all right, we're done with this inclusion with black folks. We gave them what they want. They had a few awards. Will Smith won. You know what I'm saying? We gave them the opportunity to film and produce the Oscars. Now we're going to let everybody else in. And Hollywood is highly weird, and they love pushing agendas of trans this and this and the third and alternative lifestyles. And this movie, who won all these awards, uh, what is it called everything in, everywhere at any time yeah. it won yeah. seven awards it won yeah. seven awards and the directors of the movie is um i guess you could say an untraditional lifestyle and i played it for you earlier i will play it again for the podcast so like i said this is the uh the directors of the movie that won all these films and this is what they had to say Specifically, my mom and dad, Ken and Becky, thank you for not squashing my creativity when I was making really disturbing horror films or really perverted comedy films or dressing in drag as a kid, which is a threat to nobody. Uh... All right, you made horror films and bad films, which I get, but now you want to say you dressed in a drag as a kid. Why is that right. part needed? Who needed to hear that you dressed in a drag as a kid? Yeah. Whatever child that could listen to it could accidentally hear, it. we gotta throw it out there. We have to beat it upside your head. We have to, we have to shove it down your throat. You mm-hmm. will love us, you know. And it, yes. no, I won't. I, let's start with that, right? I won't. So, but the the guy, his, his sidekick, were all like, yeah, like <laughs> point made, like <laughs> calm down, all right? Like he's not saying he's not being. Um, you know, brave and, and stunning here. This is the same thing being said by every celebrity at this point. We get yeah. it. But it's for the it is for the kids. It's absolutely for the kids. It's not for me and you. Because they know we're no. set in our ways. Nobody could get us. And we're not start. watching it. The, there you go. Right. So it's for the kids who the one or two kids who their mom put it on and they can hear that, right? Mm-hmm. And it's an agenda. And that's what that's what Holly weird is it's just nothing but an agenda 
Um, and, but, you know, I can't even, I don't know who to really fault here because the black celebrity allows it, you know, they don't, like you said, like your startup already perfect. Like we have to stop begging for white acceptance or white love or whatever. Let me be clear. I have no problem with anybody. Right. I get along with whoever, as long as you respectful, we cool. Right. Okay. But it's like this obsession so much to the point where we sold ourselves for that obsession. You know, yeah. we gave up on our own selves in, in the past just so we could be where the white man was. If we still mm -hmm. do it now, there's a lot of people who talk about that. Like it, it, somebody said to me, don't pay these people. Don't buy like some, some black folks. Like I need to leave America. Da, da, da. They, he was like, I, or, he was like, if white people got up and left America, black people would follow too. Like, well, where are they going? Cause they, <laughs> they, they're going somewhere good. I need to be there too. And yeah. you know, joke about it, but, it, but it's tr Some of them are obsessed with it. Like even when I'm on Twitter and I'll say something about individualism and I always get the random brainwashed one who will be like, Oh, you just trying to get the white man to love you. He just, he's never going to love you. And I'm like, bro, I made a comment, dog. You eat, sleeping, and dreaming white people right now because of how did this turn into white people? You yeah. know, how? Just because I'm talking about crime stats or something like how? So it is insane. And to go back to the Oscars, and it's beautiful, right? You're right. Everybody got in, right? So if we open the door to something, be clear. Mm -hmm. Even the Oscars saying, like, all right, we're going to throw a couple awards to some black folk. I wouldn't even want like <laughs> some some hand me downs, some gimmies because something's yeah. wrong with me. I need a little help. I need to no, know, you know. But whatever, right? Because this is what this is what's done. We need to we whoever we are, like the trans or whatever, um, the Marxists. We need to go in and break up this whole thing. Let's get some black people in front to march and make a big noise about it. So they could mm -hmm. open the door, get the door open. Yep. But when the door opens, it's not just you didn't achieve anything like, oh, OK, we did this for black folk. No, everybody's coming in. <laughs> so yeah. then here's the better part. They come in and then they surpass you. They because in the um, in the like the balance or whatever, the pendulum, if you will, of they say woke. I say Marxism. I need to call it what it is. Marxism. Mm -hmm. Um, in that line, you have to know which ideology will come first. Trans will come before black. Oh yeah. Now. Yeah. Like that's it. And that was done on the backs of dead black people, yeah. you know? So As a matter go. of fact, everything now is coming before black. Absolutely. Everything. We so yeah. The, the AAPI is coming before black. The Hispanic is coming before black. Well, Hispanic surpassed black. Let's just be clear. Everything right. is after, everything is surpassing black. Only thing that was matter of fact, no, I can't think of nothing that black was ahead of, really, in my lifetime. <laughs> because your, your your Negro culture was already sold that way before you were born. Yeah, and that's the problem. So, yeah, that's why that's why you can't figure it out. Neither can I until I go back and watch some old footage and then figure it out. This yep. did not happen yesterday. You know, it's been carefully calculated to mm -hmm. the it, almost to a point of when you when you realize it, it almost takes your breath away how carefully conducted all of this is. You know, yeah. we should black folk, man the 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 strength that they have in their blood right you they that person was just a slave yesterday right and then today they're not a slave that's a that's a lot to take in first off yeah. now you got to figure out a lot of things on your own but they did though they did yeah. like they it's so much and they didn't even cry they didn't even take time like i gotta process it all it's like nah i'm a free man so yeah. now I need to go do what free people do. And what's that? Well, I already got, you know, I got my family. I mean, we pray every day. Let's get this money. Let's mm -hmm. get some infrastructure going. Let's get the station, you know? Oh yeah. my God. It was absolutely beautiful what, what they were doing. And people saw that. 
and especially at the it, and for as much as everything with America, how you know I know the past was dirty, but if there was any place that a free slave was going to make it, it would be here because this was the only place that had a free market system. Yeah, that's so. You, but you don't have to love, you know, like you don't. It's you don't have to be that person to say, well, well, they were mean to us, so I don't even want to take part in it. That's stupid. You messing yourself up. But we still now it's twisted where we want to be loved by white people. Yeah, and, and I hate play them this at the same time. I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I want to play this other clip for you too. That was um from the Oscars. All right, so this is the woman who won the Best Actress Award for the movie that I never heard of that people said it was good. So let's play this real quick. This is actually a historical moment. So I really have to thank the Academy for acknowledging, embracing diversity and true representation. I think this is something that we have been working so hard towards for a very long time. And tonight, we frigging broke that glass ceiling. I kung fu it out and shattered it. And we need this because there are so many who have felt unseen, unheard. It's not just the Asian community. This is for the Asian community, but for anybody who's in, been identified as a minority, we deserve to be heard. We deserve to be seen. We deserve to have the equal opportunity so we can have a seat at the table. That's all we are asking for. Give us that opportunity. Let us prove we are worth it. So you seen it, you heard that. It feels like <laughs> a, a, a page out of our playbook. We need to yes, see it at is. the table. We need to be seen. Right. We need to be heard. Like she just said all the trigger words that we've been saying right. for the past what, 50 years. You never, yeah. I mean, in my opinion, I don't know. I don't watch a lot of Asian TV, but I've never seen Asian people come on TV speak like this saying that we need to see at the table. Mm -hmm. They create you know? their own tables. Yeah, exactly. 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 So when my first thought listening to her make that speech was in in less than a minute this lady has taken the asian community like what they they're known for and has dropped it down about three or four levels with all this <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like with all this because we need a seat at the table and this begging that she just did this mm -hmm. is not what they're known for and i saw this coming for them too i saw this coming for us really way before i way before 2020 you know facebook th these social media they're so psyop right so all of a sudden there's a meme and you don't know where it came from or whatever there's a meme and everybody's sharing it and this yeah. particular meme said it said um if you aren't mad at a white person for hating a gay person or lgbt lgb T, I think T, that's it, because Q and all that wasn't there yet. Mm -hmm. Um, person, then you should then don't be mad when they hate you because you're black. And I was like, first of all, and first of all, that whole meme already, like, why does it have to be like a white person hates gay people? Like, what? But anyway, but before I even got there, I was like, that's I said, I don't care if a white person doesn't like me because I'm black. I said, matter of fact, I'd rather them tell me that. So then that's good. Like, I already know what's yeah. up, right? Secondly, I said, it's not the same thing. I said, you know, we're just black. Like, not saying we're just black. Like, I can't hide being black. Not that I would want to. Yo, I had... And then I, was, I said something else. I was like, you know, and plus it wasn't like a bunch of gay plantations and stuff. Like, I was, you know, I said, I was like, yeah. so what are y'all saying? Everybody. If there was like 10 com people commenting, only one person understood what I was saying. I got called names, bees. Wow. Now. A bunch of black people went and tried to drag. I didn't care, so I'm not going to say they dragged me. I was like, are you guys crazy? What are you saying here? Be careful what you're saying. This was mm -hmm. back in like 2014 or something, okay? Yo. And so now here we are today, but y'all was so busy fighting. Guess what? You're left behind, bro. You're left behind. Mm -hmm. And the only time they pay attention to you is if you a man with heels on, okay? Or if you're a girl who thinks she's a, a boy and, and all that. You know, so you you already been again used. Now the Asian community is gonna start doing this, but when they started doing the whole Asian hate crimes, I said mm -hmm. I need y'all to stop. There was um footage of some kook person in New York beating up on a on an older um Asian woman. Terrible, mm -hmm. terrible to see. I thought that was bad, you know. And then they said 
oh, the man was black, you know? And they said, oh, see, these are the hate, Asian hate crimes. It's because they hate us. And we're fighting to be heard. And just starting to use these weird civil rights type terms. And I'm like, whoa, calm down. I would not say this is a racial crime because this kook would have did the same thing to me. You know, yeah. you could tell he's crazy. This isn't what black people do. Like, we're just running around beating up on the people who do that. They'll do it to me, too. They say it has nothing to do with your race. I said, mm -hmm. please don't start this jargon because you're going to start sounding weak. You know, and, and the Asian lady who I was talking to, she was like, I mean, I guess I would, yeah. And so now you got Michelle, yo, who's talking about, we just want representation. You know, we've been fighting. This girl was on Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, okay? Um, she's, I think she was on, was she in the Joy Luck Club? I'm not sure. She was on Marvel Shang-Chi. She been on like mad movies. We, yeah. I know who she is. She's tough. She's a bad actor. She's good, like bad, like, like she's she's good, you know, yeah. very good. Why are you all of a sudden begging for something you already had? We just want to sit at the table, girl. You've been in, you've been a star already. Mm -hmm. But the white man has to tell you was <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay. And and no other nationality is doing that, but now I guess it's, it's becoming a thing to do. You know what I'm saying? And like when it comes to having a seat at the table, I rather I prefer to build my own table. Say what you want about Tyler Perry. That man built his he he built his own kitchen. So he yeah. got the sink, the table, the chairs, the stove, yeah. the refrigerator, yep. the the deep freezer. He got everything. <laughs> Tyler yes. Perry got everything. And he did it from yes. the ground up. He did it from the gutter. He did it for yes. what he had less than what these actors and actresses have now. Okay. He had less. And he built his own thing up. Yes. Like, yes. When I heard his story, I was like, what? Like, yeah. and he respects it because Tyler Perry won some award last year. I, I can't remember which one, but he said, listen, we don't hate everybody, even the cops and this, that, and people was trying to boo him. He was like, no, 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 no. Like, I don't push that because he is still grateful. And he knows I, that like, listen, I'm not saying again, like people need to say, no, man, you do got to thank God. You do got to be grateful and blessed because he knows I'm a black man in this world who was poor, but I live yeah. in a country that I'm a black man who's living in my car, but because of the free market society that this country gives me, I'm a billionaire now. I own, yeah. you know, like we're getting a quarter of Atlanta probably, right? Like, <laughs> so, you know, like. Think about it. He was a can't do that living in his car to a billionaire. Yes. These on his own merit, he did his own way. Right. Instead and of again, us championing that, we'd rather cry about Angela Bassett not getting a, a, a trophy. Right. And to which I have, and, and I don't, again, I, like I said before, I have to give her credit because I don't think she was really mad about that. But the media wants this racial thing so bad. And she just, she just sat there. She doesn't have to be like, yeah, oh my God. I didn't expect her to clap for somebody else, you know? And she wasn't yeah. the only one who didn't clap for that, Lee, for Jamie Lee Curtis. But again, I have to tell you, in the rope of ideology, trans will certainly come before black. Now, I did not see, I can't fully say this because I didn't see uh, Wakanda 2 or Black Panther 2, but Jamie Lee Curtis has a boy that dresses as a woman. So, <laughs> you know, who knows, you know? I the think, sacrifice um, of that to your kid, maybe she, you know. Yeah, there, there wasn't no um, transgender in Wakanda, but there was um, uh, there was a couple of gay characters. They had like a, a subtle gay scene at the end that you wouldn't even notice. And it's funny too. <laughs> I seen it with my girl, and she was like, "I didn't, I didn't notice that. Like you overlooking it." Then we I had a conversation with other people that was like, "No, it was a full blown gay scene at the end. It was so it was. subtle. They just like sprinkled it in there just a little bit." Makes me so sick. But so there you <laughs> it does make you sick. And tell everybody you know, no, you're not tripping. You're not being hyperbolic. You're not hypersensitive to this. California has just wrote, you know, they're like passing this bill that specifically states if these Hollywood studios want tax cuts or money from the state or whatever, they have to write in diversity, equity, and inclusion, okay? They have to come up with how they're gonna have more diverse characters and they have to show a plan of action. Like they gotta get it all written up and everything and show the state like this is how we're doing it. I would not even like, so 
I don't, and then when you hear that, like, cause I was talking to my other homie about this and he was like, but when you hear it, it doesn't make you think like, oh, all right, good. They're going to make good black movies and stuff. No, they're going to tokenize everything. And this is why I don't like tokenization because it just becomes checking a box. That's what I, I like. thought when you said that. Like, I don't know if you ever seen the new Sex in the City that, that the reboot on HBO. Yeah, I couldn't watch. I didn't watch it. I, I, I heard too much going on with it. I was like, I'm not so watching. first of all, I didn't watch the first <laughs> season. I didn't watch the first series. I watched it with my mm-hmm. girl and I'm sitting there like, I'm like, who are these random black people in the show? Like, they don't fit. Like, these black folks don't fit. It's like adding white people to living single. It just didn't fit. <laughs> if you add people right. to a show that don't fit, it, it just looks awkward. And it had these right. black people in there because one of the knocks that living single, not living single, excuse me, Sex and the City had was there was no black people on the show. So when they did a reboot, they started adding these random black people. It was a bad look. It was, it was a, bad a bad look. look. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. That show, first of all, you know, all... And it's this new, like, new age thing. Because Sex and the City was out for how many se- seasons? And that was never a complaint. Okay, be clear. Yeah. That was never a complaint. Everybody watched it. Black girls loved se- Sex and the City because we were looking at Carrie's um fashion. Like, what was she wearing next? Everything. Okay? Yeah. So, there's that. And then secondly, um, and we had our, we had black shows too. Martin um mm-hmm. living single like you said the cosby i mean like w- but we didn't calculate all that we just enjoyed good entertainment so yeah. now because what comes first is not making good entertainment what comes first is we have to make sure that we check off the box first and then try to make a movie out of whatever we come up with or yeah. a show or whatever so then now it becomes trash and this is what people are complaining about this is what people are talking about like so there's this big like scandal on YouTube way back in the day before um, I was on it. I would imagine before you were on it, I'm, I can't say. When did you start doing um uh, I started content? 20, like April 2020, I first started originally. Then I shut down that old page and I started this page back in May of 2022. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So yeah. back before, right before the um, pandemic and everything. So there was movies other people noticed it before like we're noticing it now because they're really into movies and they started to notice that y'all just adding black characters or y'all just making the hero a girl and doing things like that so mm-hmm. they were already talking about it and star wars had the last jedi like the third installment and it was so bad that's what woke me up to what hollywood was doing uh, i don't even remember the title right I'm like a Star Wars fan, not like how other people are, know the whole fandom, but I respect it and I've seen all the movies. They took Luke Skywalker and they made him a complete soy boy. And that's not the word I want to use, but I'm not going to curse on on your, (laughs) you know, your lovely show. But so they, they had to, they had to like calm down the men, you know, like water them down because Luke Skywalker used to kill it with the, um, with, with the lifesaver, right? Yeah. He does a fight scene and he barely fights. I mean, it was terrible. Then the girl, she's the best Jedi that ever existed. Didn't know nothing about being a Jedi. Never went to school for Jedi. You know what I mean? But this girl's out here healing creatures. Jedis don't do that. So I remember watching that and I was with my nephew and I was like, yo, they, I didn't know Jedis do that or whatever. And he's like, it, that's how it is now. It's because she's a girl, so they're gonna make her do all the extra stuff or whatever. So yeah. you start seeing that, and then when the, when the content creators started talking about these things, they started calling them racist. Everything they were writing magazine, you know, articles about them, everything. But it, they were just talking about what's really happening. <laughs> it's annoying. It's annoying. I like. It's hard for me to watch TV. I hate. Like I said, I just hate seeing the misplaced character on the show. Like. Um, have, have you heard about that new Scooby Doo that came on HBO Max? So yeah, so I watched you it don't... to see how bad it is. Yo, that joint was horrible. So yeah. I'm on another podcast like every other Saturdays, uh-huh. and we roasted like every episode. <laughs> I'm gonna send you later, you know, but I'm gonna send you some clips of some like one of the guys who's on there and how he roasted Velma. It was ridiculous. The show was called Velma. It was yeah terrible terrible it was bad it was bad it only got like numbers 
because of the quote hate watching because people yeah. were making mad content on that and they were getting mad numbers with the content like <laughs> it was bad it was ba- it, every time they do a reboot you know it's going to be bad yeah only like only reboot that works is batman <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's only yeah. that works everything else is just corny um, for me the last good batman was the dark knight um trilogies but um but like even transformers they have non-binary transformers now what are we talking about it's a cartoon what's going it's on it's a robot that's what i'm saying <laughs> it's creepy i'm gonna send you the clip i made on that yeah they turned oh for the teenage God. ninja turtles they made april o'neill she a fat black woman with dreads yeah i seen like- that somebody i seen uh, osiris <laughs> talk about that said she was like six <laughs> <Right. Abrams>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, when he said that, I was like, yes, absolutely. There's a tribute to Stacey. Uh, and she looked miserable. You know, I'm sorry. Yeah. She just died. You know, yeah, we got to stop it. We do. I mean, it's not going to stop. It is what it is. It's going to be like it's that not. forever in a day. So, what it is, though, right? So, even going back to like the Oscars, because I was on another like live where they were talking, like, but what could make the Oscars better? And then the other guys were like, they have to make better movies that's the only way because once they make better movies it will correct the oscars okay so but uh, but now i think that hollywood is starting to notice a a real little bit i have no i have no um i I don't put any trust in hollywood at all but you got Mm -hmm. other content creators that are making their own thing you know you got eric july he has his own comic book um Mm -hmm. people are starting to do their own thing if they can do it you know People want real things or fun things, not yeah. <laughs> not just check off box. Okay, here you go. Now make a movie, make a show, and even back to the Oscars, right? They so <laughs> they gave Brendan Fraser um, an award. If you went back and look at the awards, he got Best Actor. Remember Brendan Fraser, right? Mm-hmm. From the Mummy, the Mummy Returns, the boy okay, on. Yeah. Yeah, the the one, the lead character used to be flying around and everything or whatever. And then um, he left Hollywood for a little bit. I don't know what happened to him. I think he was depressed or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So he made a a movie called Whale. So he's in a 600-pound fat suit, right? And they gave him him the award for Best Actor. We already knew they weren't going to give it to Tom Cruise because that movie, Maverick, what was it, Top Gun? Excuse me, Top Gun? Yeah, it was too masculine. (laughs) There you go. So you yeah. see, yeah, <laughs> you already won. <laughs> so I was like, they're not gonna win it. They gave him, they gave them a an award for the best sound. What is that? Anyway, <laughs> but somebody else was like, Elvis was a good movie. The the movie Elvis, it was a good movie, and that actor he did a really good job. But they gave it to Brendan Fraser. But you have to watch the subtle, the subtle moves they do to disrespect it. You know, to let you know, like we we. It, 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 there's symbolism in everything. Well, Whale yeah. is not just about a fat guy who is trying to figure out his life. Whale is about a guy who like hates Christianity. He hates God. They basically disrespect God, like in the movie. That's the movie that you know the, the got the award for best actor. Of hmm. course it is. Of course it is. Check that out. You know? Yeah, I, I still got to see the movie, but um, yeah. I listened to another content creator to talk about that, and he was like, "That's why Brennan got." I thought they gave it to him because he was a comeback guy. But yeah. the guy broke it down. I said, no, yeah, that's why they gave it to him. Hmm. It's all agendas. And so yeah. you try to enjoy it, but you see it, you know? You yeah, see, and last I think that's, year, that's, that's Hollywood's main thing, just to have agendas. And I think that's why, like I said, to go back on Tyler Perry, like, he he have his own thing, but is he really fooling? Like, he does dress up in drag, I guess, right? Because he does do Medea. But he did that before it was a thing. Like, before it was an agenda, in my opinion. That was just somebody that worked for him back in, what, maybe the late 90s he was doing that? On the right, chicken circuit. Yeah. He had to so do what he had to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he killed her, remember? Didn't she die? Didn't he kill off that character? Yeah, but um, she came character? back when he, his movies oh, wasn't she- doing good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he went back to that well. <laughs> he said, I'm trying to give him respect. Like, oh, yeah. And then he ended that. Like, no, yeah, but then she came back. But yeah. you can tell that he is, I don't know. I think he is looking at it like, I don't need to do it as much. You know? Yeah. Some of his movies, used to, I used to stop watching some of his movies because the black woman was always bitter and had to do what she had to do. 
You know, that's always that narrative, you know, <laughs> like, like, you know, we just, we don't have time to do what we want to do. We do what we have to. I don't live like that, man. Like, yeah, yeah I mean, you know, I have some rough times here and there, but damn, I, I have a little bit of fun too, you know, like, yeah, not every day is a war, you know? And so that was the thing. It's like, it's, it's liberal. It's, and you, one of your, um, one of your commenters earlier said something and she's right. They do want to see us in certain ways, slave, yeah. um, you know, gangster, whatever, because that's what the liberal thinks black is. Yeah. So. And that's what goes back to my live stream for a bit that we just had. I just had about Colin Kaepernick saying that he want to see himself as a black man, but he see himself as Allen Iverson. Like that is so extreme. Like Allen Iverson, <laughs> that's, that's how you tap your end of blackness. You can't be Ray <laughs> Allen. You can't be no other basketball player from back then. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? Right. <laughs> yeah. He needed the cornrows. And there's a picture in his comic where the girls part. Oh, God, this thing is so cringy. Like the girl, she's she's getting ready to do his hair. And she's like, oh, my God, your hair is so dry. And he's like, should I have put water on it before? And I'm like, yo, man, people knew what moisturizer was. Like, stop that, you know? Don't do that. And she's like, no, moisturizer. And then when she goes to part his hair, there's angels in the back. I'm like, oh, I can't. Yes. Because... Yes, my little clip that that little piece is, is on there. It's angels in the back. Like, oh, I found God because somebody's parting my hair. You didn't like scratch said, your head. No. <laughs> I feel bad for him. Clown world. <laughs> no. <laughs> I feel bad for Kyle Kaepernick, man. He's the ultimate. I guess what they call him useful <laughs> idiots. He just. <laughs> I feel so bad. Like a lot of athletes are like that, but he's like the ultimate one, like top tier. He is. He is. Yeah, I he, feel so bad for him. I will say he is like a lot of them probably are like that, but his face is very well known. So now his simp, like everybody sees it. Yeah. And the problem is when they were asking him questions, like, well, how do you feel about this? How do you feel? About he has another documentary coming out that he did with Spike Lee, you know, mm -hmm. another race baiter. I mean, most of them are, right? Anyway. And I have respect for Spike. Anyway, so, um, and he's like, yeah, my documentary, my documentary. So it's going to be nothing but more complaining in another documentary. You would yeah. think this man was out there straight up picking cotton the way he talks. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, and I, it's just always connect to some sort. To these people, black is cornrows, do-rags, and struggle. Yep. That's not true. That's yeah. just. And so I don't feel bad for him anymore because, you know, you're an adult too. Some things just don't ha just. There has to be a time where something just doesn't feel right to you. You're not poor, you know, where it's like, oh, I had to do what I had to do. There are certain things in the medical field that I've been offered a job for. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not mm -hmm. doing that because it just doesn't feel right. And I definitely don't have money like Kaepernick to be turning down money. And I'm still like, it just doesn't feel right, you know? But you never know. Like, you never know if just because he's an adult don't mean he hasn't matured enough to see that he's being used or he's seeing himself as a victim. Like, your age has nothing to do with it. It's just that it's how you see yourself. He probably seen himself at this one age and it stopped growing from there. And there's a lot of people like that. I mean, you're right. I, you know, I, <laughs> you're right. I'm just going to say you're right. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and I'm just going to say you're right. Like, but I, th what I think for me, then it, if you have an internal struggle about your victimhood or whatever you feel, you're just, you know, trying to figure out who you are. Fine. You have the, you have every right to have that. I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. But when you capitalize off of it, but I don't mind um, capitalism, but then you take the narrative and you give it to a child who does not, who is not you, you know, who already thinks the world hates him. And then yeah. now he's told, watch your back because you're oppressed. I think mm -hmm. that is so evil and I hate it so much that I end up not feeling bad for him. You know, I can go see that. see that. then, you know, but you're writing a, a comic book and you're giving it out to little black boys and you're saying, see, my white mother 
didn't like my cornrows. She thought I was a thug. So what is that three, you know, four year old? They're gonna think, you know, like, oh, all white people looking at me like I'm a thug because I got braids. Yeah. Most white people don't even care what you have in your <laughs> like. And, the and then they part about like, it too. Now, now I'm thinking about it in my head. The the tip, the stereotypical liberal white women who have a black adopted child is going to get that book for that child. Like I understand your struggle. Here you go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then that's not, man. And let me be clear. Like, of course, fashion, you know, a look, a cultural look. I get it. You know, I do. But and young men want to lean towards something edgy. You know, my brother mm -hmm. tried this thing where he was wearing a towel on his head and was trying to drive the car. And my father <laughs> caught him in the streets and almost embarrassed him in front of the whole block, you know, but whatever. <laughs> so I get it. But it's, but all parents would be like, all right, now bring it back. That's enough, right? That's enough. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be a comic book. And you keep doing this to these people. They probably like, damn it, I knew it. <laughs> that father probably like, I told you we shouldn't have adopted that boy. <laughs> <laughs> See, Mayor Lane, I told you we shouldn't have adopted that black boy. Like, you wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know, because I know yes, I've been I saying that. I feel bad for all, all three of them. I feel bad for Colin, his parents, and all of them. I feel bad for the parents more than him. Colin no, I, feel bad. I feel bad for the parents more. I do. I agree with that. But I still feel bad for Colin Kaepernick. I I just feel like he don't know. He don't know what he what he do. Then step back and figure it out. But don't make books about it for little kids to be just as confused as you. Who can't but afford how it gonna, to be? How's he going to get money now? I don't care. Figure out something. You got all that money. Flip it. Go get some property, please. Go, you know, open up a trucking business. Y'all can't all the time be famous. Figure yourself he, out. He, they always have to be victims. That's the thing. You always have to be a victim. His his job is victimhood. He put himself in a position to become a victim. And his job is victimhood. Even though he defied the odds. Even though he defied the odds. Being an adopted African-American and became an NFL quarterback that went to the Super Bowl. Right. And you still playing a victim. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but pull out of it. I mean, I would, I would gain so much respect for him. You know, he would catch a whole new audience. He would still be able to make money. People oh, yeah. would want to hear what if he came out and was like, you know what, guys, I'm tripping and the media machine is making me do this. And I want to tell you how, even if Netflix doesn't put it on the daily, Wire, somebody's going to pick it up and they have oh, yeah. money on alternative sites. Okay. They do. Yeah. He's just not ready to, step out on his own you know mm -hmm. he's not you know and also at it could all. be his uh i don't know his wife or whoever uh what's her name nessa I don't know. it could be her it could be her that's also driving a narrative too yeah you know she you, i you, think she likes him yeah you starting to see that a lot now i'm trying to get off topic i ain't trying to get too yeah. too off topic but <laughs> you starting to see yeah. a lot now um wives driving the narratives for their husbands yeah, you see it with Nessa head. and Colin Kaepernick. You seeing it with Gabrielle Union, Wade and Dwayne Wade. You know what I'm mm. saying? You, you've probably seen it a little bit with Sierra and Russell Wilson. Absolutely. It's like they driving this narrative to be some be something more. Then mm -hmm. when they can't drive the narrative too often, they get a divorce. And you see like um what's the sister sister twin? Tia? Tia Mari? She yeah, ain't doing the yeah. most. She doing the most of her son is getting embarrassed. He's like, Mom, what are you doing? But she been getting naked or something. She she wearing less yeah, clothes. She, isn't she? Yeah, she doing that now, <laughs> doing her little TikToks and all that. Like, come on, man, you pushing fifty, and you still you still doing this, right? Why do you want this anyway? Why you have? You know what I'm I don't know. I I don't know either. And so it's like the topic of stars, right? Who I guess they they all have this. They don't know who they are. You know, they don't. They they don't know even how to connect to people. Gabrielle yeah. Union, that girl's a sociopath, and I don't care what nobody says. I, I have absolutely no respect for Gabrielle. I, you can't get me to feel bad for Gabrielle about anything. I'll quicker feel bad for Colin Kaepernick than Gabrielle Union. Okay, <laughs> but I do feel bad for Dwayne Wade, to be honest. I don't feel bad for Dwayne Wade. I think he should have just grew some balls and told her to get out. I'm dead Yeah, serious. but he got caught up in some tornado he can't get out of. <laughs> what tornado? This thing the, is the Gabriel Union tornado. tornado. He got caught up in a Gabriel tornado and he just stuck it in floating around like a cow. Okay. And that tornado um, just 
spinning him around. Like he's stuck. Like he's the stuck. Wizard and, of Oz. Um, all right, yep. I, this is just why I'm gonna feel sorry for get of uh, for Dwayne Wade, and this will probably be an unpopular opinion, but I'm gonna say this: a lot of times these athletes are cornballs, right? <laughs> all they know is basketball, and they mm. do that till they get to the NBA. And Dwayne Wade probably met Gabrielle Union was like, "Yo, I love this woman in all the movies. I always wanted to be with her. Now she's giving me a shot, and he's doing whatever it takes to be with her. Same thing with Russell Wilson. It's like." These athletes, all they know is sports. But all they know I'll... is sports, and they get to the highest level and don't know what to do themselves. You see James Harden always in strip clubs. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, they don't know how to speak to women. Yeah. There's only a few yeah. of them that, that did it right. LeBron James with his wife. You know, mm-hmm. Chris Paul with his wife. Mm-hmm. You know, even you see right. Chris Bosh, his wife started messing with Lil Wayne. Like, you see <laughs> Scotty Pippen's wife is dating Michael Jordan's son. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> Yeah, this is turning into this. Yo, I've seen that. I was like, what is this? Like, yes. But the difference with all of them, I they're 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 all terrible women, whatever. But Dwayne, you sacrificed your son. Nope. I have no pity for you. I've touched on this on my channel. And this mm-hmm. is my going theory that speaking of awards, right? We could talk about award. And double ACP, and I'm pretty sure you saw their speech. You know, I got copyrighted. Yeah. I had to go back and <laughs> anyway. So that's why I didn't do and, a video on it. it. Like, God, I was like, damn me. I don't even nobody's watching, but okay. So um, <laughs> <laughs> like 30 people. No, um, which I'm grateful for all of them. But um, but yeah, she was there. She said, This is a new age of activism, and da da da. And she's what she's doing is that she's telling you like Yes, we fought for black rights. Thank you, NAACP. Now we got a new age of, black, uh, of activism. And black trans is hunted every day in this country. That's what she said next. And, I, and in my video, I was like, that is absolutely not true. We're not going to do this, right? So yeah. see how the, the black celebrity, this is why they're all Marxists. They take, they said, okay, we're done fighting for you, blackie. Get the trans and put them in front, okay? Mm-hmm. This is her saying that. Now and she, now she feels like she's fighting for something, but she has to believe all of that because of what she did to his son. Yes, that was her. Um, Dwayne, let us not forget Dwayne did have a baby on Gabrielle Union. I remember yeah. that. I remember that fiasco. Yeah. That felt so bad for her. I was like, oh my god! I thought they were gonna break up and everything, and then they got married and everything seemed like it was okay. I was like, oh, you know, so I liked them together back in the day. I thought they were cute. You know, I thought they matched very well. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, later on. His son is talking about, I'm a girl and all this and whatever. And she's taking him to pride parades. I said, it's because that type of stuff is the woman doing it. Dwayne Wade yeah. isn't going to dress up. his. He doesn't know what girls wear and heels and stuff like that. He doesn't. I personally think that Hollywood came to them and was like, we need you to, you know, we need you to give up that sacrifice. Right. So it was probably yeah. going to happen anyway. But that's when you really just off yourself before you let that happen. I'm and I'm going on a tangent, sorry. But <laughs> you know, but, but I think she was like, Oh yeah, oh I got the perfect one for you. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna help out yeah. with that. Absolutely. She's still but bitter about it. I still feel bad for D Wade because he is going through his son transitioning in public. How as a parent, you love your children unconditionally, you have to do this. In, in public because right. to me to me because your wife because your wife is putting this in the forefront you know what i'm saying because your wife i don't know what it is about these actresses from this time from the late mm. 90s and the early 2000s that became irrelevant but to start stirring up some weird <laughs> shit like her and lisa ray and vivica fox like all these actresses from that era <laughs> tia mari you know say all of them from this era it's yeah, just they, being they, real they, weird <laughs> and it, attached to weird things they get and they it's get like, and Gabrielle <laughs> Union is the ringleader. She's the queen of it. Like, she's the woman king of these weird women who don't get act, acting jobs no more. Right, right. Yep. So what are they gonna do? Right? They got to get the money because Vivica Wiggs ain't selling as much as they. You know what I mean? Like they probably were back in the <laughs> yeah. Like you know what I mean? Her braiding hair kind of sells. It's kind of good, you know. Other than that, like what? Yeah. These these girls are. They are liberal women. They. They cut down the male. 
Vivica Fox rejoiced when Kevin Samuels passed away. That's yeah, no. <laughs> and shout out to Ke yesterday was his birthday too. So shout yes, out to Kevin shout Samuels. Out. Yeah. You know, his channel went live all of a sudden. I was like, whoa, what's going on? Like I got a notification. Yeah. And I was waiting to see. And I and then that's why I tweeted. I was like, oh my God, Kevin Samuels channel just went live. I was like, <laughs> I was like, relax, liberal <laughs> women. I'm sure that it's just, you know, like a pre-recorded <laughs> thing. Y'all don't gotta, you know what I mean, start trying to off yourself or nothing like that. But <laughs> they hate this. It's the women, Jamel Hill toxic masculine black she said toxic black masculinity is white supremacy these women are terrible and i'm yeah. a woman I'm telling you i know what they're capable of you know if i didn't follow god i could act like that too and they're manipulative yeah. but yeah she she is the definite ringleader she has a young cute little face so she still looks ageless and so mm -hmm. she looks like she's ready for the fight I told you, like I said, black folk, okay, we're done with you. We're in a new era, a new era yeah. of, this, of this. And that's why, again, it's in, it's back in, it's in the Oscars. And it was something you said, Woman King. Speak of Woman King and the Oscars. The director of Woman King was mad as hell. She said the whole Oscars is racist because <laughs> they, they didn't nominate them for one movie. Woman the King. The movie was bad. The, uh, the, uh, the, the director is white. No, she said in her mind, she's like, I was saving black people. I deserve an award, damn it. That's how, that's what she's thinking. I didn't want to make this damn movie. Y'all making me do all this DEI, okay? And y'all didn't give me a, 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 an award. She was going off. But Viola Davis told you, if you don't want to see this movie, you're already racist. Well, I don't know where I fit in because I did not want to see that movie. If you remember, you know, dead yeah. on arrival <laughs> 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 like these movies is just these it just it is all a tribute to their ideology to their religion yep. it absolutely yep. is it's all connected you have the black the only reason why black folk are important again in this is because we are passionate people, right? Mm -hmm. And when we find a cause, we are ready to be allowed to fight for. I am like that. I, I definitely embrace that, right? So my cause is like the constitution or something, or like, you know, your rights are being taken away from you guys, you know, the yeah. stuff. so I wanna talk about that stuff, you know? And so on the left, they get loud about some stuff that don't make any sense, but they're passionate about it. So they know who to put on the forefront. I mean, you mm -hmm. got a Cori Bush, who said, what did she say? The Congresswoman, she said, we need to get rid of fossil fuels because it's white supremacy. Fossil fuels is white supremacy. How retarded. Oh my God. <laughs> How dumb <laughs> is that? What is it? But, but they know we're going to say it and we're going to mean it, you know? Yeah. So it is the women, the black woman is leading the march on castrate. For me, the liberal black woman is leading the march on castrating men and the entire system of America. As far as I'm concerned, yes. Yes. Yeah. That's what it's about. Look at yeah. Tia Maori. What's she doing? I got to go check out what she's got going on. I might have to put that on that girl case. <laughs> talk yeah, about I, I sent you some clips. I sent you some Please clips. Do. But this is a great episode. My, <laughs> oh, almost my longest one. We almost hit an hour. We almost hit an hour. Oh, that, almost I was my like, longest oh. one. <laughs> you know, I like we both like tired, like we gotta get to work, right? But I could talk all day, but I'm like, God, give me the day where I just get paid to get on a mic and just like, oh it's man, it's coming soon. It's coming soon. As long as we keep the grind man, going, coming soon. Yeah, we got to man. And I yes. and listen, it's, it, it, all this stuff we just talked about, how filthy and fake and superficial it is. It is a weird, it's been a weird two, three years, but man, I thank God for it because I have connected with some genuine people such as yourself. I am grateful to know. I really am. And I enjoy coming on your lives and chit chatting and everything, watching your video. You be having me cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> like you do, man. Like you say certain things and I start hollering like loudly. Like, so I, I, I really enjoy your content. I it's probably because like we're in the same age group and. <laughs> And both being from the East Coast. So it's like, you know, a little certain slang right. that only a, a selected I, people know. I was driving the car, cracking up loudly to myself. Like, <laughs> and then you keep me up to date on certain things going on. I'm like, dang, I didn't even know, you know. So I really yeah. appreciate it. I really appreciate it. And I also appreciate our relationship and I appreciate you coming on too. 
Yeah. You know, say last minute. I was like, I want to do this episode. I'm like, perfect. I was like, I'm gonna end my live short, and I'm gonna do this tonight <laughs> and post this the next time. Right. You had plans. He's like, all right, y'all. I was like, <laughs> what? I told y'all it was gonna be short. I'm like, yeah, I didn't know it was gonna be ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, you good, you good, you good. Yeah, nah, I enjoy. Uh, yeah, definitely. Nah, I, enjoy. I guess let people know where they can find you at on your social medias. So, I'm definitely I'm on YouTube, that girl Casey, and it's all one word, that girl Casey, and then um. Oh my I'm, bad, I forgot. I got this stupid thing on here from Osiris I mean, again. Oh well, you just gonna have to brick for now. Go ahead. <laughs> I, mean, like, <laughs> I just look like hip hop. Oh, you wow, you just, I actually just mind. But um, so yeah, that girl Casey on YouTube. I talk about everything on that channel. Um, because everything really is connected, and it goes back to this uh, communistic Marxist design. It's all connected. But um, so you can find me there. I'm on Twitter, that girl Casey one with the number one. Um, and I post really cool things and fun things on there and i'm starting to get back on instagram y'all so it's I that see. girl case media i'm like <laughs> yeah i'm like i need to wake this instagram back up so catch me there too and there's more to come but y'all can catch yeah. me yeah so yeah instagram is um it's a double-edged sword like it's good because it's easy to get the stuff out there on but they don't pay like i i make a lot more money on youtube than i do on instagram even though on instagram i got 20 thousand plus followers so it's like i rather try to push youtube more because right. instagram i can't crack 120 dollars a month what the heck and all like all them followers like you bring yeah yeah but you know they really meta's really not doing good right now so i yeah, guess that's why that's to get it together yeah i'm i'm good on the youtube because like i said meta is just meta's a mess it's, it's an a absolute mess. And my Facebook, I still haven't, I'm going to build it, but I, I think I'm just still having like anxiety because it is frustrating to post something and nobody sees it. So I don't know, but yeah. I, I'm going to do it because I have to navigate through Facebook. And, and that's kind of why, I, I mean, you know, I talked to you behind the scenes, Shane and I started our own Facebook group and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. He got a lot of followers on Facebook because yeah. his father tell people about his page. Like, we don't know oh. what we're doing. <laughs> Oh, oh. All right, I gotta get on that tomorrow. I have, I gotta catch up on there. Oh, but honestly, I'm at the better. point like I, I don't think I don't even want to do with Facebook no more. I hear people complaining about the payout. I hear that the payout is not good. It's not worth putting the content out there. And it's like, you know, between Rumble and YouTube, that's where the money's at. Like, why even yeah. bother with something else? I hear you, but even traditions, even if you don't put it out as much as you do Rumble and YouTube still put it out there it has to be put out everywhere that you can and even though i hate i hate facebook with a passion i really do but i know it's a necessary evil because people don't know what's going on out here people don't know and any change really it starts in the cultural level right people really need to be awakened out here like i'm seeing how these young kids are acting and who they're looking up to this Krishan and and Blueface, Blueface people. yeah. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? So it's they a new need, Bobby and Whitney, huh? Yeah, but even <laughs> I, anyway. So, but Bobby and Whitney, I, they have cameras in front of them 24 seven, like maybe that's what um, it is. Krishan and Blueface. Yeah, yeah, that they they're young and they're developing on the camera. But the problem is, you get ten year olds who see this and be like, yeah, that's how I'm gonna act too. So they need to they need to hear you like you are a successful man, a successful black man, right? And mm -hmm. they just need to hear something different. It's not about politics or whatever, but something real. Because at the end of yeah. the day, even the other listen, the other stuff is fun, right? Like, come on, right? Tawdry talk, right? But yeah. people still want foundation. They still need to hear something that means something, even if it's mm -hmm. it's for half a second. So yeah. It is important to get out on all the um all the platforms because they're destroying children and and they're that's what that's what it is so we have to come together and make a loud voice and it has to be everywhere everywhere you can yeah. get it out there yeah. how you feel, uh, before i wrap it up how you feel about TikTok? 
I'm still trying to learn it. And that's like, I have no beef with TikTok. You know, and this is why I hate Republicans. They're like, we need to ban TikTok because of China. They're, they're spying on us. And I'm like, Doug, my phone is, even if it's off, it's spying on me. Like, why is this a thing all of a sudden? Like, yeah. why is this a thing? So I'm trying to, I, I need to sit down and get on all platforms, you know? Well, my, this is my second TikTok page I had both one first got shadow banned drastically mm-hmm. and now just another one i got got banned flat out why yeah uh i, I think i forgot what video i posted but it's funny because i posted the same video on youtube monetized i posted the same video on instagram monetized but that same video i posted on tiktok banned the like, chinese it was, warning. Don't... it was nothing it was no warning yeah. no account flag it was banned I try to fight it, banned. So when somebody sent me a TikTok, I have to watch it via web. I can't watch it on the app. No. Yeah. You know that that app though, like to me, I'm like whatever avenue you can get, but that app though, you know, that's where a lot of this um trans stuff started getting birthed on that app. Out yeah. here, like where the kids was running into like a lot of these weird videos and stuff like that. It's it's probably geared for America. I mean, again, you know, it is from the Chinese, and they probably like, ah, oh, this guy sounds too smart in education. He's, he's black and successful. <laughs> Take him off right now. He's you know, it's crazy. Sense. When I first started TikTok, my son told me that he said, "You're, you're not gonna last." That's what you mean. Yeah. I'm not gonna last. He said, "Man, mm-hmm. yeah, check it for me." Like he said, "You ain't gonna last, Dad." Watch. I don't know if he flagged me or not to prove himself <laughs> right, but <laughs> <laughs> like we said, no, no, he, yeah, but, like, that's what it yeah. is. Yeah, because. Yeah. Cause not, I'm not saying every black person on there is doing like um, bad stuff, but if you know they're probably doing decorating or balloons or something like that. Here you come with some sort of message, and you're a man, a straight black male. Oh, mm-hmm. Get him out of here. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a threat. he's gonna Wait, wake up I, the man. It's crazy. Like I was able to go live on TikTok and all that stuff, and getting people <laughs> coming my lives, and they just banned me. I'm like, I'm done. And it's crazy because Kofi said his daughter just got banned, but I think. She got banned, but she oh she fought it. She got her her TikTok back. Yeah, they probably they yeah, men I'm, get the, the short end of the stick. That's crazy. I'm not shocked. Of, you gonna make me not get on that drawing for you? Like now, I'm about to be like just, just, just never try mind. it out. See how it works for you. Just try it out. But for <laughs> me, I don't like that they did that to you. But yeah, two strikes, I'm out. I'm good. Wow. Yeah. I wonder who else happened to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't yeah. blame you. I don't blame you. But. But yeah, but and Rumble, they're 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 doing big things with Rumble. I heard Rumble's getting better. I haven't been like my stuff syncs to Rumble, but I never mm-hmm. get on there to really work with Rumble. But Crowder just got on Rumble, so there's they're they're gonna start upgrading everything more. Yeah, I, I gotta start looking into the out the, the Rumble algorithm and how to. Yeah. I'm trying to run Rumble the same run the same way I run YouTube. It's not really translating the same way so i gotta figure right. something out yeah 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 you have to actually go on it and figure it out yeah but it, it's it's going places so yeah. yeah 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 but uh thank you for coming on casey thank you for coming on and spending a whole thank hour you. with me talking <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, right? Like, just yeah, roasting. It's fun, you know? What are we going to yeah. do? I like <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you again for coming on. I appreciate you. All right, thanks for having me. See you guys. All right, bye. <laughs> All right, man. So that's that, man. Great conversation with that girl, Casey. I'll put her link in the description box so you guys can check her out. You know what I'm saying? Great content. We're trying to get her page to grow. We're trying to help her grow help her become monetized you know some people just want to do this a full-time job i think she's one of the people who want to do this a full-time job and she has a passion for it so subscribe to that girl casey and check out man definitely check out but thank you for coming on casey great conversation you know what i'm saying all right man to next time peace real rap ron is signing off all right later one